Slavic kiss pinch. He just said, know your place, son. Uh, who's Benj in this case? Is Benj the dog or is Benj the human? Because if she's asking Benj for a kiss and that's the human, listen dog, I give you free housing, free food. You can't take her too. This is why dogs end up in the I cold in those videos that go viral. Either okay? way, he run in that situation. Uh, it's impressive. Beyond. I, could you do one? No! Could you break one if I you were standing I'm, without jumping? My knee's jumping? hurting just watching this. Like, how, I am just washed up. After this, the second one, how does he keep going up? I don't know. That's my question. How do you keep That's going up for the third defies one? Defies gravity. Okay, fair. Uh, let me introduce to you real quick the 50 cent of bowling. Uh, 50 cent when he threw out the first pitch for the Mets. Everyone's seen that. And if you haven't, you're about to see why. Because I, I he like, absolutely nails the TV. Takes is that a strike? Effort. Is that a spare? What does that go down? <laughs> do you get another try? Is that a mulligan? That's an L. That's um, what that is. Welcome to Buckets, everybody. The reason why we show you these videos, as always, is because this show is not just a basketball culture. Getting Buckets is a lifestyle. He's Rob. I'm Cassidy. And coming up on the show, if you're going to get bounced, we give advice on uh, how to do it in style. Plus, the NBA may be at peak petty right now. So mm. we review the most petty crocker situations across the league. Also, Corey Brewer joins the show, and we talked to him about being a part of one of the wow most epic dunks in NBA history, and also what it feels like to get yammed on. Petty wop. Yeah, petty, that's a Petty wop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, all that and more. This is Buckets. So no big deal, uh, but we are on the verge of a full-fledged war. Tensions have been building between players, specifically star players, and referees this whole season. And this week, Draymond Green, he got fined $25,000 for his comments to The Atlantic where he called the officiating horrible and said it should be one of, if not the main priority to be solved. He then had a suggestion on how to solve it, saying they can get a whole new crop of officials. Ruining the game is aggressive <laughs> statement from Draymond. Ruining it's the January. game. January. Yeah, he is mad. Uh, Draymond's, Draymond, he's not the only person player talking about uh, the refs. So you don't think that anything's different this year? That that's um, so the way it's always been. I mean, when you watch some of the games, you, you just you just never know. Uh, man, you just just got to hope is, you know, a system in place, you know, just making sure they get checked just as much as we do. Now it's, it's the triggers is too quick. It's, if you look at somebody wrong, you get a technical foul. You, know, you say one wrong thing, you get a technical foul. The relationships that the players and the officials had when I first came in to now is it's, it's a lot different. And it certainly feels different. He, make, he makes a good point there. I asked a lot of coaches, I go, are you noticing kind of a, a, a war brewing here between the players and, and refs? And some of the coaches were telling me that, you know, it's, they got a lot of younger referees now who are right. trying to make a statement, not like the old veteran refs who kind of had a relationship with these players. If you're known as a ref, it's not because you're, yeah. you're good. You're, you're known amongst the players as being a good ref, but amongst the public and the fans, yeah, we know Joey Crawford, yeah. we know Ed Malloy, we don't know Ken Mauer. We right. don't know Derek Stafford. I mean, we do because we're a basketball show. There you show. go. There's your shine. The, yeah. I, I, don't know, listen, I love the ref, I love refs following ref culture like this. Only person but, ever to say that. But, but go on. On the player side, if you're a player and you're going to get ejected, there's got to be some, like, you're, you're the show at that point. Everyone's watching you, if you're, especially if you're at the away game. The fans are like, get out of here. They're waving Didn't by you. Did you get ejected, basically? How art. to make it count. There's an Make art. it count. There is a perfect way to get ejected from an NBA Make game. Make it count. Now listen, we could sit here for hours and debate what should constitute disqualification and what shouldn't. That's ultimately up to the NBA. But as fans, we've been subjected to this painful break in the action so many damn times, Seriously. we now have a sufficient sample size to determine what is the perfect ejection. Step one. Give Cold it. War. Mm -hmm. Every great ejection has moments of passive aggressive tension. When a player thinks they got the raw end of a tough call, they're going to bitch about it just enough so the officials know LeBron they're picks. bitching about it, but not enough to be assessed a technical for dissent. Step two, the Cuban Missile Crisis. 
No more flirting. No. Something during live play happens which causes one of the parties to show their cards and threaten warfare if their demands are not James met. James Harden sure did that. Yes. Step three, the catalyst. An action by an opposing team member causes the frustrated subject to lose their cool and exert their anger in a demonstrative, obvious physical action. A flagrant foul, or KG telling Mello his wife tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. Yo, that was this wrong. is the point where the player in the process of being ejected loses sense of reality and nothing other than the apocalypse will satisfy his thirst for justice. No, exactly. That Honey Nut Cheerios line. Like that was that was, that was beyond disrespectful. Like he should apologize for that even to this but day. But I don't even think there was like an ejection there. All right. No, because well, there's so much that is said between players on like on a minute to minute basis. Right. But the fact that that line got out, like you do extra research on right. players. Step four, fallout. The player is ejected. The player cannot believe the disqualification ruling as is an outright injustice without precedent. Yeah. Step five. But your honor, this is the part of any Judge Judy show when the <laughs> exactly. defendant gets absolutely reamed for saying something stupid. And right before Judy drops the ruling in favor of the plaintiff for X amount of dollars, get out of my courtroom, bye. <laughs> the defendant gets off one last, but your honor, I swear. Of course. Get, get out of my courtroom. You got to get your money's worth. You know, <laughs> I mean, you're just going to walk off and take it. No, if you're already gone, happens. you have if to you're go already gone, you get, kicked off. get your money's worth, okay. son. That's all, right. all. Step six, tantrum. Punching the air. Middle fingers. Curse words. Yeah. Misery loves company. Mm -hmm. Step seven, raw is war. By God, King, he's trying to get into the other team's locker room. Yeah. All hell has broken loose. If the DQ player is not trying to confront the enemy in the tunnel after the game, it is never yep. the perfect ejection. Speaking of honey Shout out Cheerios. to Boogie and Durant yes. in, in New Orleans. Exactly. And finally... And the guy who's scared in the background Oh, yeah, there. was leaving the door open. <laughs> yes. Uh, and finally... The usher there. Uh, Subtweet pedo. Whoa. No ejection is complete until the subject is so mad he has to take out his frustrations right. online. No. When the grass is cut, the snakes will show. I don't want to be here. If you're going to be salty, there's no place to do it better than, than the online. internet. Yeah, because you know what that shows? It's not only that like, all right, give it some time, you'll cool down. No, I'm going into the locker room. All right, give no. it some time, leave the arena. Nope. No, I mean, you can't. You also can't like say it literally. Like I'm mad online. No, no you got to like. You got to take emoji. some time. Got to think. This is why like, emojis how could are I a be, thing. Yes. How could I be creative and then get it off and then the make way it the way Boogie did it is after Mello yeah. did his in the grass the snakes will show or yeah. when they're cut. Uh, Boogie did the emojis. He did the grass, the snake in the grass. Right. That's like you have to be passive aggressive in the NBA. Being upright and upfront about it is does not play. Ever. And no one has ever done it that way. And speaking of petty, now a banger. So these are acts of pettiness from this season, right? I feel like there, there's ways to be petty, not only for NBA players on a court, but if you're just if, if you're just playing basketball pickup style, like there's that. ways to be petty. Exactly. Like, like the clapping in someone's face. There's nothing more disrespectful than your opponent cheering on your demise. That's hostile. There are other acts that aren't that hostile. Um, Goaltending after the whistle. Yes. So when players just randomly do like their practice shot thing. Right. Um, Which is petty in itself. Getting a practice no, shot up. To, the the goaltending after the whistle is so petty because players are willing to risk coming down and blowing out their knee. <laughs> right, right. Uh, spraining their ankle just for the sake of you not yeah getting that ball through the hoop. Not getting buckets. Buckets are buckets yeah. by any, the first rule of bucket club is get buckets by any means necessary. So if you're on defense, don't let the bucket in. But we're talking about practice shots. Um, another act is crossing the free throw line 
before a big free oh, throw. The Jimmy Let's Butler see. face. Yes. So I want to make the point again that NBA players are used to everything. They're used to fans heckling them. Yeah. They're used to music being played. It's really hard to rattle someone at the free throw line because, again, these guys are professionals and they've been doing it all their life. Yeah. One way is that Jimmy Butler, Reggie Jackson example where, hold up, hold up, we want to switch. Like, you go over here, you, you go over here. Jimmy was like, at the oh, very, no, no. It's that icing guy, the that kicker. Was, it is you, icing the kicker you in You knew the moment yes. Jimmy Butler... The look on his face, yes. he was going to miss that he game when exactly, he free throw. Yeah, and he knew exactly he, Oh, hell no, you didn't just do that. He did. That, that gets you shook. And by Reggie Jackson, of all players. He got no shook shame. by that. Yes, he sure did. So that's mental warfare inside the lines. Yes. You can also do it pregame by wearing an Ooh. outfit that trolls a s- individual. And mm. I'm talking about, about specific. The obvious one the, is, is uh, Russell Westbrook. Or Penny I mean, Brook. Yeah, so Kevin Durant was... Was out, yeah, he, he was part, out doing one of his photography. Hobbies. Yeah, he likes he, he likes taking pictures. So photographer. what does what does Russell Westbrook do? He shows up to the <laughs> game wearing an official. Yeah, and he can like say, "I always, you know, my outfits are outside the box." You're it's, wearing yeah, he's he, a, a photo. It's petty because he blames us, and this is just my fashion yeah, line. Yeah, no. What are some other examples of like is someone gonna wear a metal well, hat? Well, he also one did another. Days? He did that again with his clothes because he wore that cat shirt after the burner Twitter. Um, fiasco. Right. He goes, I can't play with these cats. And so he, yeah. I need him to start picking players outside of Durant. I want to see him wear a mellow hat. One way that you can go straight for the jugular is uh, mocking someone's celebration. Yes. Like playing against Mello and going like. Yeah. Uh, I'm The most famous one is Jordan uh, dunking on Matumbo oh. and giving him the, the finger wag. Yeah. That's the most famous one. It is. I- imagine if, oh, please, uh, basketball gods, hear me. If it's Cavs Warriors this year, can I, if Steph is going to continue to be obnoxiously cocky yeah. and petty, I want Steph to or Draymond to do the after a Ooh, game. Wait, is winning. Steph is going to be obnoxious? You Either, mean if LeBron's going to be obnoxious? No, I want Steph to do the LeBron after a big three. It's a very intricate celebration, though. Like if, if you if you're going to commit to mocking LeBron. It's the if finisher, he does yeah. this yeah. and pounds his chest, That's a lot. stop the series. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's, That's like when they stop and one mixtape, they just say, over. all right, this game's yeah. over. We're leaving because something like that happened. You stop the series on the spot. Yeah. Probably the most disrespectful act of petty happened in your home with, speaking of LeBron. Yes. Uh, when you're throwing water bottles, especially on the Madison Square Garden floor. This is the mecca of basketball. You can't be insulting the floor like that. No. Um, You're so bored with the game. You're so bored with the Knicks that we don't even care about our bench guys that are in the game. We're just going to play the flip bottle challenge. He knew this was a nationally televised game. This would not have happened if it was Fox Sports Ohio and MSG It wasn't just LeBron. It was was the entire team. team. Yeah. He was making a point yeah. that we are so bored with the Knicks and you are so irrelevant to us that we would rather do this. Yeah. So if you are with your boys and you're showing up to a, to a pickup game and like, oh man, these guys aren't even good. Like not trying on defense or like getting water while the game is still going on. Treating the game like it is the third most important thing that's going on is without a doubt the pettiest thing I think that you can do on a court. No, I, like, I honestly don't know if I've seen anything more petty than the water bottle flip. And this has been uh, an era of petty behavior in the NBA. So beat that. Uh, that's not going to be beat because of the character, the plot, and the setting. But one dude in particular who has experience extensively with pettiness is the dude responsible for one of, if not the most, memorable poster dunks in NBA history. That is Los Angeles Lakers forward, Corey Brewer. And he joins us now on the starting five. Corey, thank you so much for joining us on Buckets. What's up, Corey? Yeah, hey, appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Your Lakers squad, average age, 24 years old. So you're the old head, you're the veteran in that locker room. So what's something that you notice your young teammates do off the court that makes you feel real old? Off the court? Yeah. In the locker room, even whatever. The the music they listen to nowadays. Huh. (laughs) Like who? What are we talking about? Gucci gang? Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, I just, whatever the rappers are saying, like, all my friends are dead, all this. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? 
I mean, have you set Lonzo straight on this the Nas disc? Please, one, two, please, three Corey, times? hold it down for us that were born in the '80s. Oh, I, I, we had that conversation. I was like, Nas is one of the greatest. He's like, Who? yeah. He, he he tried to justify. He didn't say Nas was bad. He just said he wasn't. <laughs> He wasn't hot right now. I get so. that. He's, and he said that. He goes, all right, it's just not who I'm interested in. But then he comes out at the garden with the Nas sweatshirt with yeah, the space on it. Yeah, you can't be trolling it. a great like Come that. on. Come on, man. Yeah, he was trolling. That was, hey, Lonzo being Lonzo. You are responsible here for one of, if not the most memorable poster dunk in NBA history. Going back to when you dunked on Derek Fisher, you were with the T-Wolves. Now, the reason why I'm asking you this question, you've also been on the other side of the stick when someone like Tony Allen threw down on you and you're like, oh crap, now I know what Derek Fisher feels like. Can you take me into the mind of an NBA player in both situations? Uh, when, when you dunk on somebody, it's, it's exciting. You're, you're so happy. Um, just, just the whole feeling is an amazing feeling. And when you get dunked on, oh man, you want to, you want the ball to get inbound as quick as it can. Are, <laughs> are you thinking about like the the internet? Like, am I about to go viral for the wrong reasons? A few times I've been dunked on, I've been like, oh man, that's gonna be on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> yes, see, that's the answer I'm yeah, looking for. Is yeah. the uh oh moment? That's gonna be a top ten. The so, that's probably the, the first time. That's top ten. But look, like Rob said, you have one of the greatest dunks um, ever in NBA history. You also have a 51-point game. What's your favorite memory from that game? Ah, man, just um, we won, but my favorite memory, memory was I just couldn't miss. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> I was like, everything I threw up was going in. It was unbelievable. Did, when you're having a follow-up question, when you're having a 51-point game, is there a coach telling you how many points you have or another player? Like, yo, Corey, you're at 40. You're at 45. You're almost at 50. Is it in the back of your head that, like, I'm this close to 50? Or are you just getting shots up and whatever happens, happens? Now, my teammates start telling me when I have 42. Like, <laughs> yes. Oh, you got to get 50. Come on, man. You got to get 50 tonight. <laughs> Who is the last NBA player, someone other than yourself, the last NBA player that you would want to see in a dark alley at 2 a.m. Like you turn the corner and you're like, oh crap, who is that player and why? I'd have to say Zach Randolph. Is it really going to be a fight? I don't want to see Zach Randolph in the alley at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Zach Randolph, number one. Okay, yep. that's, I think we've we've had that discussion. Zach Randolph is he's the unanimous. consensus number one. Yeah, um, even with his flip phone, he's yeah. unanimous. That's, you know why, that's why you don't mess with him. He's got, he's got the burner ready to go in case you could throw down with him. <laughs> All right, so, like, we know you're close. You mentioned uh, that national championship, there's two national championships you won in college. Uh, have you ever been on a banana boat boys trip with your Florida guys? No, nah, we haven't been on a banana boat trip like that before. We've all hung out a few times for sure since we've all been in the league, but so, no banana. So what you're telling me, Corey, is there's been no uh, CP3 mellow toast kind of that we're going to play together one day? You no Joe know, Kim, uh, yeah. Horford. We can't get the, the big three from Florida together at least once? If the opportunity arose, we would love to play together. Okay. Or the Thunder may be looking for some new players. You could, you know, go back with Billy Donovan. You never know. <laughs> oh, that, would be, that would be fun to play with Coach D for sure. Yes. You, you don't have a burner Twitter account, do you? I don't have I don't have a burner yet. <laughs> yes, okay. Fear is nobody. Um, no, because you're serious. You're a serious dude. You're yeah. you know you're a grown up, and and a big part of um, you know how responsible you are is that you're heavily involved with the Diabetes Foundation. Is can, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do for that foundation? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I did the actually the American Diabetes Foundation. I did the walk um, the other day, which was great to raise money to help the cause. Um, I have the Corey Brewer Fight Diabetes Foundation with Shands Hospital in Florida, which is, I do a basketball camp every year, and it's been growing and growing each year. Um, just anything I can do to help diabetes, help to help find a cure, hopefully. Well, we really appreciate all the work you do for the Diabetes Foundation and also for joining us here on Buckets. You, you were honest with us. We appreciate it. Not petty. I, what, what did we learn about Corey? He's not petty. He's real. Corey's He's real. real. He, he um, gave us real. I was worried about some PC answers there, but yeah. if you give us the, you know, the the honest truth, new newfound respect. Kind of feel you. like he no. really would like to have that fifty-one point game, though. And I you're like not going to give that up too easy. I do feel like he's petty. Part too of easy. I'm going to give it up too easy. <laughs> not easy. Too I, easy. Yeah. Had a blast. <laughs> Thanks so much, Corey. Appreciate Thanks, Corey. it. Appreciate it.
Who do you think Corey Brewer was talking about that uh, he's not down with his young teammates Little listening Uzi to? Burt? <laughs> he's an ugly god. I don't know. Playboy Cardi. Corey Brewer seems like the kind of guy that I could go to a Dipset concert with. Or Dipset? A Dipset? J- Jada Kiss concert. Yeah. You're really <laughs> aging him. You're really aging him. No, but for real. Can no. you do a Jada Kiss laugh before we go? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cough. It's <laughs> <laughs> no? All right. Let oh, me God, we need to get hit out us of here. up on Twitter. Let me know if I nailed it. Uh, or Facebook, YouTube, the whole interwebs. We well, want to know your comments, thoughts on the show, um, and suggestions for our next banger and any viral viz where, of you guys getting buckets out there. Get buckets, die trying, and stay petty. Live by the code. Thanks, guys. See or you soon. die by it. See you next week.